In this video, we're going to connect to Cloud Firestore and we're going to use Cloud Firestore to store our users' data about their questions. So anytime a user asks a question, we're going to store that in Firestore. And the reason we're going to do this is because we want to also have a list of past questions so user can go back and see their past questions. So to do that, we are going to need to store those questions somewhere. And by the end of this video, you'll actually be able to ask the question in the app and it will send to Firebase and save it. Let's get started. So we're going to start by adding the cloud Firestore package in pubspec.yaml. And we're going to be using version 2.2.2, .2 which is the current version as of the time of recording this video. Once that package is installed, we also need to go over into the Firebase console and click on Firestore database. And we do just need to create the database here. So we're going to start in test mode, which is going to allow read and write of anything for up to this timestamp here. You will want to add security rules before you put this on production, but depending on how your app is set up, the security rules will vary. And I do have a video on the channel describing how to set up the security rules if you wanted to check that out. Now it's just asking you for a location. So just choose the location that is closest to you and click enable. Once that loads up, you'll see we now have an empty Cloud Firestore database. And since we added that package to Flutter, we can actually start adding data to the database. The way we're going to structure the data is all going to be based on the user's ID. So in the past videos, we set up this anonymous account when a user opens up the app for the first time. So we do have a user ID down here. If you did set up your app with different types of authentication, but you are using Firebase authentication, you'll still have this user ID same way, even if it's a login with Google or login with email and password, you'll still have that unique user ID. So with our database setup, we're going to have a user's collection and then we're going to have a document with the name being this user ID. And then within that, we are going to have another collection of all the questions. And we'll also later be able to put some more profile data on that user's document directly. So currently right now, when you enter a question here and click the ask button, we're going to be getting the answer and setting the state of that answer. And that's going to happen in this answer question void function down here. And you can see where this is called. It is just called on the on pressed of the button. So we're going to be putting the logic within this void function of actually saving that question and answer to Firebase. So I'll put a comment here and just this will be where we save to the database, but we want to actually model out this data first. So we're going to create a new model for a question and it's going to contain the question, the answer and the time of this question being asked. So in our models directory over here, we're going to add a new file and it will be a Dart file. And this is going to be called question. And now we'll create a class called question and model out that data that we want to actually set to Firebase. So we're going to have those three values. The question, the answer, and we're going to also have the date time, which is going to be created at, or we'll just call it created. And now we need to initialize the question and we're not going to require any of these three parameters to actually exist. So we can just initialize the question by calling question here. And since we have null safety on, we are going to actually have to add a question mark to the end of these types here because we are going to allow these to be null. Now, when we upload a question to Firebase, we need it in the format of a map, which is going to essentially just be the key value pair that we want to upload to Firebase. So we can create that function real quick right now. And this is going to be returning a map, which is going to have a string key. And the value will be dynamic. And the reason for that is because these types up here are all different. And we're just going to call this to JSON. And then all we need to do here is actually just set each one of these parameters as a string. So we're going to have the question and that is going to map to the question. 
then we'll have the answer which maps to the answer and finally we'll have the created which maps to the created I'm actually going to change question here to query and that looks good so now we basically We'll be able to call to JSON on any question object, and all it's going to do is return the data formatted like this, which is the exact format that we need to send to Firebase. So now that that's set up, we can go back to our home view and use this question to create a question object that will be used to send to Firebase once this ask button is clicked. At the very top of this state here, we are going to want to define a question and we will just call it the question and then initialize a question here. And now we can use this question object and set its query and answer values based on the input and the answer that we're generating. So down in this answer question here, we can update this question query and it's going to actually equal the questions controller text so if you find where we're using this questions controller text, which is right up here where we're displaying it, we can actually go ahead and also replace that with the question objects query. And then we can also update the questions answer here. And the answer is simply going to equal the answer that we are already setting up there. And lastly, we can set the question created. And that's going to just equal the current date time, which we can call with datetime.now. So now our question object is going to have the three parameters set on it. So we can now use that object and actually save to the database. I'm just going to delete that comment for now. So the first thing we need is a Firebase instance. And this is going to be an asynchronous call, so we will need to await it which also means we need to make this an asynchronous function. So we're looking for that Firebase Firestore instance. And once we have that, we can call collection on it. And we're going to be creating this new collection called users. And then we want to create a document on the users collection with that user ID. So if you look how we are displaying that user ID right up here. We're just using our auth service and calling the current users UID. So we can just drop that right in here. And I'm going to break this into a few lines here so it's a little bit easier to read. But after that document, we're going to create another collection. And this collection is now going to be for the question. So we'll call it questions. And then finally, we're going to add that question object to this new collection. So it is going to be that question object that we created and we already set all the parameters for it there. And now we will call to JSON on that. So the reason we're calling this to JSON, oh, and it looks like I lost the question variable there. So the reason we're calling that to JSON on it again is just so that we can get the question formatted like this. If you aren't fully understanding this, basically what this is doing, it would be the same thing as if we wrote it. It would be the same thing as if we wrote this right here. And if we replaced query here with actually this part, this text, you know, if we changed it like this, it would achieve the same thing, but having it as an object makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion, to read and easier to work with because we can always just grab that question parameter whenever we need it. But now that this is set up, if we rerun the app and we try asking a question, should I go to Firebase? And the answer is yes, so that's a good sign, although as you know, this is just randomized. So let's see if it actually worked and went to Firebase. And it looks like it did not. All right, so that didn't work, but I actually restarted my Android Studio. Sometimes when you add a new package, like we did with this for Cloud Firestore, 
there's sometimes issues that I've noticed with Android Studio actually compiling that correctly. So sometimes I need to completely shut it down and restart it. So let's test out and see if this works now. And if we come over to Firebase, you'll see it did in fact work. So it was just an issue with with my Android Studio. So if you have the same thing, consider restarting Android Studio, but you can see the question is here. And this is the document ID. It's actually just a random string here, which then has all three fields, which we added in. So this is working great. One thing that you might notice is the question is still displayed up here. So we can quickly remove that just by setting the question controller text equal to an empty string. So after this call is made, we're just going to set this equal to an empty string and that is good. Another thing you might notice is there's kind of a space after this question mark. So if you come up here and just remove that space, that should fix that. Now, if we rerun and type in a new question, and hit ask, you'll see it does clear us out there and this is now formatted correctly. And our new question is also going to be right here in Firestore. If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's gonna be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're gonna be able to see on YouTube for free are gonna be that base app and this is part of that. But if you want to see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, in-app purchases, and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. And right now at the launch of this video, you can get the course on pre-sale with a 30% discount. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com backslash monetize. If you missed the pre-sale, no worries, you can still get a discount and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.